The U.S. Army's next missile is designed to outshoot Russia's Iskander, and it might just do it without leaving the launcher. China's hypersonic DF-17 is already in the field, but America's Dark Eagle is coming in hot. And Iran's ship-launched Pelican 2 drone? Let's just say it's cute. It's like a seagull that learned how to spy. Oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. I almost forgot. I had mandatory fun day, and this is a comparison of some U.S. Uh, military equipment against the equipment of adversarial nations. At the end of today's video, I'm going to be reading some of my favorite comments from previous videos. You guys are quite funny. Up first, we have the United States PRISM versus the Russian Iskander. The Precision Strike Missile or PRISM is the Army's brand new replacement for the aging ATACMS. It's gone through Milestone C, production is underway, and live fire tests this year pushed it past the 499 kilometer range mark. It's compatible with both HIMARS and M270 launchers, and each HIMARS pod now fits two missiles instead of one. Russia's Iskander has been in service since the mid-2000s, and in Ukraine it's been firing quasi-ballistic missiles with maneuvering re-entry vehicles and penetration aids. Its maximum range is about 500 kilometers, carrying a warhead between 480 and 700 kilograms. It launches from a dedicated road mobile TEL with two missiles ready to go. Range-wise, it's almost a tie. Prism Increment 1 hovers around 500 plus kilometers with extended range versions already in testing. The Iskander matches that, but with proven battlefield performance. And you can't really understate how valuable that is. Truly seeing how something performs on the ground is uh, pretty remarkable as far as, you know, testing it, making it better, and then figuring out how best to use it. The Prism doubles HIMARS magazine depth. The Iskander stays at two. Guidance-wise, the Prism starts with GPS slash INS and will eventually have seekers for ships and moving land targets. The Iskander already packs a maneuverable warhead, terminal seekers, and decoys to slip past missile defenses. But here's where it gets fun. In a Pacific scenario, Prism's double-up loadout means more missiles in the fight without more trucks. A big deal when resupply is a nightmare. If seeker-equipped increments come fast, the Prism be could be become an anti-ship and mobile SAM killer. Iskander, however, has already survived real-world missile defense attempts and has a nasty endgame maneuver profile. If these two are ever faced off indirectly through proxy warfare, Russia's advantage is combat experience, but the U.S. is closing the gap hard, and it may leap ahead once Increment 2 arrives. If these two ever did go head-to-head, -head, what do you think would win out? Combat proven experience or the brand new tech? Please let me know in the comments. Next up, we have the Dark Eagle, the U.S. Dark Eagle versus the Chinese DF-17. The long-range hypersonic weapon nicknamed Dark Eagle, uses a common hypersonic glide body atop a two-stage booster. It sounds terrifying, except it's not fully operational yet. The Pentagon's own test office says they still don't have enough flight test data to prove its effectiveness or survivability. Fielding was supposed to happen already. Now it's sliding through fiscal year 2025 into 2026. Meanwhile, China's DF-17, an MRBM with a hypersonic glide vehicle, has been in service since around 2020. It's part of the PLA Rocket Force's regular inventory and has an estimated range of 1,800 to 2,500 kilometers. It's designed to strike regional targets in minutes, bypassing missile defenses. The LRHW's exact range is classified, but it's believed to greatly exceed traditional SRBM, MRBM envelopes. Think beyond 2,500 kilometers. The DF-17 operates in the high sub-ICBM space with a confirmed 1,800 to 2,500 kilometer range. That is extremely far. Both carry hypersonic, maneuverable glide vehicles capable of unpredictable flight paths. Well, but what's the difference? China's is already integrated into its operational units while the U.S. is still ironing out the wrinkles in testing. Today, the scoreboard says China wins on available now hypersonics. The DF-17 isn't a prototype, it's a weapon they train with and could launch tomorrow. The U.S. advantage lies in its industrial muscle and the fact that the LRHW is just one hypersonic system in development. If Dark Eagle gets past its test issues, it will have strategic reach far beyond the DF-17. Until then, America's hypersonic deterrence is more about countermeasures, sensors, and survivability than firing back. Do you think the longer range system is worth the wait? That is my question to you. Let me know in the comments. This video is not over, but if you want to order some merch so you can support me further, head over to themandatoryfunday.com. We've got shirts, hats, water bottles, coffee mugs, all of it. In addition, you can become a member and get 20% off website purchases of any kind. Also, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. You can find that on the website too. Let's get back to the video. Next up, we have the United States' L3 Harris Military VTOL versus Iran's Pelican 2 VTOL UAV. Now, I know this is not an apples to apple comparison. Calm down. This is my video and this is is not a democracy. Joby Aviation and L3 Harris have announced they're teaming up to build a gas turbine hybrid VTOL aircraft for military missions. It'll be optionally manned, long range, and capable of ISR, logistics, and teaming with drones. The optionally manned part is why I think that this is still a relevant comparison. First flight tests are scheduled for fall 2025 with demonstrations the year after. Iran's Pelican 2 is a small ship launch VTOL UAV first unveiled in 2019. It uses four lift motors plus a pusher propeller, can take off and land vertically 
quickly and can even land on water. Its mission is mostly maritime patrol and reconnaissance from Iranian naval vessels. The U.S. aircraft is based on Joby's S-4 lineage, which cruises at around 200 miles per hour with a 100 to 150 mile range in all electric form. The hybrid variant should go significantly farther. Pelican 2's exact performance numbers aren't public, but it's clearly in the small UAV endurance range. Joby's platform can carry crew, cargo, or sensors. Pelican 2 is limited to small ISR payloads. I think this is a classic example of how the U.S. will spend a significant amount of money to get something way more, way more expensive that does a lot more, as opposed to other countries that'll go for a cheaper option that they can mass produce. This isn't necessarily a fair comparison. I know that. You probably know that. The Pelican 2 is a tactical scout. The Joby Hybrid is a utility aircraft. But in context, the Pelican 2 gives Iran a cheap way to extend its eyes over the sea, queue missiles, or harass commercial shipping. The U.S. platform aims to give U.S. forces a quiet, runway independent aircraft that can drop in anywhere, carry real payloads, and link up with drone swarms. If you were in a fight, would you rather have more little scouts or one big bird that can carry the fight to the enemy? You guys ready for some comments? Your studio looks sweet. I like the Master Ball neon sign a lot. Duck Duck 8889. Thank you. That Master Ball lets me catch all of the information that I need to deliver to my viewers with a 100% uh, catch rate. What the hell? Why do you look 10 year old? What did you do? How did you get younger? Um... You know, this is an aggressive compliment, David, and I appreciate it because I do not feel younger. Not at all. Love your videos. Keep it up, man. Live, laugh, toaster bath. Thank you very much, Cody. Thank you very much. We are going to keep live, laugh, la live, laughing, toaster bathing, and hopefully at some point I can talk without sounding like I'm in the middle of a stroke. Wayne said, das ist gut. I think that means that's good in German. I think. Jamie said, we don't have, we don't have do nothing. BRICS is going to fail because they don't care about their people. Well, I don't, I don't know that we can definitively say that BRICS is going to fail. I don't know. Uh, it, it, you know, some things are not looking good, but anytime this many significant international powers get together, I mean, they can make things happen for sure. I think we got to wait and see. Anti-social with two eyes said, oh no, Russia lied? Who could have possibly uh, have guessed that would happen? What an idiot. I don't know who's an idiot. Am I an idiot? Why are you making my internal voice external? Slapkit51, this dude is insane if he thinks tariffs are not working and if he thinks BRICS is even able to come close to competing with America. Go back, yo, holding cardboard signs. That, that is, the cardboard sign guy is not me, it's a, it's a friend of mine, uh, Zach Bell, veteran with a sign. I know we look kind of similar because we're both white, but that we're, we're two different people actually. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison because I enjoyed giving it to you. Sorry, I made such aggressive eye contact as I said that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to watch one of my other ones and I will see you next time.